Hi there, and welcome to the 59th Octoprint on Air. I'm your host, Gina Heuske, still without the B in the name. And as you can see, we are back in my office for this one, even though right now the weather would actually match uh, a, a trial to, to do this outside. I didn't trust it enough to uh, do uh, the similar thing uh, that uh, that I did the last time. And also I have to, I have some things this time to show you though uh, on, on the other screen. So um, I figured we, we will do a, a regular normal one <laughs> from my office. Um, yeah, so okay, a short out outline first. Um, I will be talking about what I've been up to th since the last one of these and also what the next steps will be. What I will not be talking about this time are uh, yeah, is is basically a quick look at the stats. Um, for now, I'm 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 not doing that anymore. Simply uh, unless there is a specific reason to do that, because for example, there are some fun findings in there, or there is a new release uh, uh, out that uh, that that yeah makes it interesting to actually look at the stats. The reason that uh, for that is that I've uh, frankly just have had to spend way too much time to look at stats over the past couple of months, thanks to all of the stats manipulation stuff that you hopefully have seen by now, either on the Octo uh, print block or in the last update of these. Um, and um, yeah, and I also don't think that was the most interesting part of these videos in any case, uh, unless of course there was something interesting to see in the stats. And this is also something that we will still have if there is something. So I'm, I'm, I'm constantly looking at them, not constantly, but I'm regularly looking at them anyhow now, uh, even more so to make sure no, no, no further manipulation is, is happening. And um, so if I notice something, then I will schedule that down to be mentioned in the next um, Octoprint on air. But if not, then not. And right now there is simply not a lot of interesting stuff to be seen there. I mean, we are looking at the end of the summer, at least on the north part of the Earth. Um, and um, yeah, people are printing less in that time usually, um, but they are still printing and stuff is pretty stable so yeah uh, the only thing that i want to say here is that the numbers are have normalized now <laughs> after after getting rid of the fake instances yeah so uh let's just start with uh, what i have been up to and for that i uh, really want to switch you over right away to the screen um also I hope everything is, is clearly visible here. I will also check that in the recording, but uh, I recently switched to uh, a 4K display here on the right as well. And um, uh, I hope that OBS uh, makes this makes makes this whole browser uh, 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 still still uh, readable and, and stuff uh, by recording it. Also, I, I upped the uh, I upped the um, yeah, the it's it, it's at one hundred fifty percent. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I lost my words here just now. So a uh, regular Octoprint update, uh, Octoprint login screen. Uh, I'm going to quickly log in here, and once it has loaded, you will see this here, and this is what I want to talk to you about now. Um, with Octoprint one eleven, there will be a new bundled plugin called the Health Check plugin, and this uh, notification up here is part of that. Um, currently, it's running with faked data because obviously Python version 3.11.2 is not at the end of life. That is actually the end of life date for Python 3.7. And we are still seeing a whole bunch of uh, instances that are running Python 3.7. And um, given that a whole ton of the dependencies that Octoprint itself um, depends on are now uh, stopping to support Python 3.7, that is becoming a big, big problem for maintenance. So the goal of this warning thing here is to tell people, hey, your Python version is end of life, please update. Um, Octoprint in version XYZ will no longer support this, this Python version and you will be left behind. So basically the same thing that we already did with uh, the Python 2 to Python 3 migration, we now have to do more regularly apparently uh, because the whole Python ecosystem is running uh, instead of walking now, apparently, with regards to how long stuff gets supported and such. Uh, and there's a lot of, of changes always, and there's also a lot of changes that 
uh, would also help with maintenance and would also help with performance and such. So it really makes a lot of sense to try to keep a bit up or, or at least to try a bit more to keep up with uh, with recent Python releases and not try to support everything that is already yeah considered to be ancient and uh, actually out of life like Python 3.7 is now. Um, so the health check plugin will will check against a little file that I have put on octoprint.org, which will contain information about Python versions that are end of life, and also from which Python uh, from which octoprint version on this will no longer be supported. So that this this thing here can actually pull down this information and display it to the user, and then also link to a little FAQ entry which currently doesn't exist yet, which I still have to write. Um, which will uh, explain how to migrate to other Python versions uh, or to a newer uh, Python version. Uh, but this is not the only thing that the health check plugin does. Uh, I'm going to click this away. And by the way, this little um, notification will only show up every 30 days. So if I if I now reload here, um, it will not pop up again. But what will be there if there are any warnings or errors by reported by the health checks is this little uh, um, thing up here and if you click on it then the health check result pop up pops up uh, and that will show you uh, the amount of, of found of, of issues that you really need to take care of as soon as possible and also if there are any uh, things that are not that bad but really you should still know about them being a thing there is also the concept of warnings and in this case here I've simulated that this is not actually a development version of Octoprint 111, but um, uh, uh, by now somewhat ancient version of Octoprint 186. And um, there is a health check implemented that will check against the available Octoprint releases and count the distance between yours and, and uh, the latest um, and warn you if this uh, looks a bit too old and it will not like it will not scream at you if uh, the latest version is say 1103 uh, and you are still on 110 oh but it will um, uh, start complaining with this little bubble so really not that much of a complaint but still it will notify you um, if you are two minor versions behind so uh, in this case it will not trigger, I think, for 1.9, but for 1.8, if 1.10 is the latest, it will trigger. Yeah, um, what I also implemented here, uh, which I'm not uh, demoing here right now, is, uh, let me quickly change back to me for now, is um, um, a, a check uh, how much space you, are, you, you still have left on the disk. So uh, it will check through all of the folders that you have defined, so the upload folder, the time-lapse folder and such, and, and check the um, available disk space for all of them. And if anything looks like it's running out soon, it will create a warning. And if anything looks like it will really, really, really run out soon, it will create an issue as well. So um, just a little thing to give you some more transparency on the health of your whole underlying um, uh, system. And uh, also with the option to link you to FAQ, uh, 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 FAQ items um, on, on how to solve any problems or any potential problems that have been discovered. Um, and the output of this uh, health check will also be part of the system info bundle. So uh, we, we can also, if you if you share one of these, can also be used to ch to check if there is anything that you might not be aware of yet uh, more easily um, uh, to to help you uh, in 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 realizing that. Um, Plugins can also feed into the health health check, uh, so define their own health checks, and uh, this the this plugin, this bundle plugin, this bundled health check plugin will then call them. And so I've also prepared an adjustment of the Pi support plugin, which will um, also re uh, add, an, add, a, add a health check report if there are throttling issues observed with the system, for example. Um, yeah, and of course it is a plugin. It is a bundle plugin, but it is still a plugin. So if you really do not want to have health checks, you can just disable it as always. 
Um, yeah. So that was one big development thing that happened over the course of the past couple of weeks. Uh, another thing that I did was, you might have already spotted this here if you were looking really closely at the files header, there's a new icon here. Um, and uh, what that does is it opens the now newly bundled upload manager. This might look kind of familiar because, um, oh, <laughs> I should actually share my screen here. Um, wait, um, right. So this little icon here, and if you click on that, then it opens the upload manager. And this might look somewhat familiar because um, what I did here is I pretty much based the upload manager on the uh, existing file manager plugin by Salandora, aka Mark Hannibal, which uh, uh, sadly, uh, yeah, he has not been able to maintain for a long time now and which was starting to look like that as well with plenty of open issues and problems. And uh, yeah, um, considering the really good feature that it is, I decided to bundle it. Um, so um, yeah, I moved it into Octoprint itself uh, as a plugin once more. Um, uh, changed a lot of stuff around, so moved it from a tab into its own overlay here, um, or its own pop-up. Um, also did a lot of change to UX and UI and such. Um, uh, and I should also say that I got Zalandor's blessing to do all of that, all of that uh, in advance. Um, and it took me way too long to actually get around to, to, to acting on that. Um, so this supports all of the features of the file manager plugin, but it also now has some stuff like bulk operations, for example, will now trigger an, um, a progress overlay. So if I just say I want to move this over to maybe that's not the best thing. Let me quickly create a new, um, a new folder just to demonstrate this. Uh, if I now take this and copy it over into this newly created folder, also, you might just have seen that I quickly selected multiple files. That was the usual click, control, shift, click again, and then it selects everything between the first one that you selected and your current, currently click one. Um, and then you can just say copy, and it will copy these three items into the new folder, which you can check here. You can also copy a whole folder into another folder. Um, you see that the size also changed here. Now we have them both in here. What you can also do is, for example, if you say, yeah, well, everything that I have right now is ancient and outdated. I don't want this anymore, but I don't want to throw it away. I just want to move it into this archive folder over here. You can also move it with this little scissor thing, select the archive folder and something went wrong there and I have no idea what crap. That, that is always the problem when you demonstrate something. Um, I'll have to investigate what is up there, but um, yeah, everything else was moved. It could actually be that those files were still in here and that then that folder wasn't empty, uh, which I looking at here. Yeah, they were already in there. So you, it will not overwrite in that case, but rather report them as empty. So if we delete that now, yep. Go in here again, move everything out again. And it will always also copy all of the metadata, last printed date, stuff, everything like that will always be copied along. And if we now move that in there, there also should no longer be any kind of error. I hope. That looks way better. Apart from it now hanging. Perfect. Well, okay, uh, as you see, I'm still working on that and I still have, have to uh, iron out some bugs. It probably copied that, but something in the update mechanism on the front end got confused. But uh, yeah, so this is basically how all of this works now. And um, really weird. I have to check what is up there. There's, there, there seems to be one file that it doesn't like right now. 
which it definitely liked in earlier testing. So uh, I have no clue why, but I'm going to simply ignore that. Um, and and figure that out later because weirdly it does apparently copy it it just never gets 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 this reported back because as far as i can see here all of my test files are still there so weird weird but something i will look at later in any case so yeah that is that you can also rename stuff and uh only only single files though and if you then hit a name that is already in use it will tell you that um, you can also download individual files or you can also do something like this and download them and then they will be downloaded all zipped up for you. That also works with folders. So if you try to download a single folder, you see the download button is functional um, and it will generate a zip file with everything contained therein. And yeah, you can also fold, uh, sort folders first, then files, files, then folders, or everything mixed in between. Um, you can do the usual filtering, and that is pretty much all. You can also do stuff like select everything that is stored locally. Okay, we're currently not selected to the printer. That was uh, maybe a bad example. Um, uh, you can select all folders, or you can invert the selection stuff like this uh, so all of this works and it will also always tell you how how big all of the files the, the, that you uh, have selected right now files and folders i should add uh, are uh, on disk so um, everything in here right now weighs around 19.8 megabytes all of the test files here on this local instance um yeah so that is the upload manager uh and search yeah search also works i hope at least that yeah so you see end-to-end -end test is here and also in here um and um if i now want to delete something it will ask if i really want to do that i so far didn't want to add a confirmation dialog for deletion uh, when we did not yet have this manager because if say you wanted to delete 10 files then that would be quite annoying to constantly click delete confirm click delete confirm because the old file list uh, down here does not support multi-selection but now that we have the upload manager we can just say uh, we select a whole bunch of files click delete get one question if we really want to do that and if we then click proceed then it will delete all of them at once without additional confirmation so uh, i hope that will make managing way more easier i also still have to figure out if i really want to keep this behavior where if you click an already selected file it will deselect it instead of only select it you know I think that is still a bit weird and wonky with regards to the UX and I still need to work on that. And I need to figure out what failed there with the move, but uh, that is probably related to some minor changes that I did yesterday. So that should be uh, an easy fix. But yeah, so the upload manager, that was roughly a week or maybe one and a half of work. Um, but I think that will... Uh, help people a lot with managing stuff and it is maintained now um, contrary to the file manager plugin um, it's also more tightly integrated with octoprint um, be, uh, and and thus i um, yeah it is it is not an, an a plugin that is so it is really a bundled plugin as in it ships with octoprint core it's not a plugin dependency like for example the file check plugin or something that gets pulled in from uh pypi and is on a on a, on a different release uh cycle um but i will actually keep that for now at least keep that in octoprint itself um so that it can be kept up to date alongside octoprint without any jumping through any hoops and if you look into the plugin manager and to the bundle plugins uh, down here you will see upload manager based on work by mark hanapel um, and yeah so that will 
hopefully help with management. Yeah, so back to me. Okay, what else did I do apart from these two Raja large development activities? Um, I also got rid of some tech debt. Tech debt. Uh, there were a whole bunch of deprecation warnings um, uh, thanks to package resources, which was a, a package that we used in the plugin core itself, and also some other other bits and pieces to pass version numbers. And I got rid of that dependency, so no more no more deprecation warnings and also a bit more future-proof code. And I also, while I did that, I actually fell over another deprecation on the um, IPI version check in the software update plugin, which uses a, utilizes an API endpoint on uh, the PyPI side, which uh, the endpoint itself is not deprecated, but some fields that I was reading from the response that I got back have been marked as deprecated and they are still getting returned. But the, the documentation page made it quite clear on PyPI's part that those can vanish any second. So uh, I switched the whole PyPI version check over to a different API, which was a bit, uh, yeah, which was a bit of, of work uh, because it functioned completely differently and required some more parsing, but I got it working. So yeah. Uh, and then there were also some other small, smaller bits and pieces left and right that I took care of uh, when I ran into them. Um, I also worked on some improvements of the development process. So basically I improved the developer experience, the DX instead of the user experience, the UX for once. Um, so one thing that really annoyed me <laughs> a lot when I ever I had to work on the front end and for the upload manager, I had to do that a ton. And had to touch the last files was that I had not did not have an easily available file watcher that would compile the last file again um, when a change was detected. So I quickly implemented that as a command line argument for the Octoprint Dev tools. So Octoprint Dev CSS colon build uh, colon watch dash dash all will now watch all of the uh, of the last files that are bundled within Octoprint, and uh, if it detects any changes in there, it will then rebuild them. I've only tested this under Linux because this is what I uh, what I use. I'm pretty sure it should also work on Windows though because I'm using the same thing that it makes the watch, watched folder work uh, in, in Octoprint, which is that folder where if you throw a G-code file in there, Octoprint will pick it up and upload it itself. Um, and uh, what I also did was I added a little tool uh, so that less C, the, the less compiler is no part of the of, of Octoprint's pre-commit uh, um, uh, uh, stuff. So that um, whenever you check in a less file, pre-commit will detect that and uh, run less C on it. That required a little wrapper script that I first had to write so that things would actually work fine, but I think I managed to do that and it is looking good now. Um, and the good thing about this is it will make me notice if I make a change to a less file and then forget to check in the corresponding updated CSS file because then the pre-commit check will fail because it will detect that the CSS file got updated by the... Um, uh, by the less compile run that it got that it triggered uh, but uh, yeah uh, I didn't have this this changes these changes in the commit as well so the idea here is really to help anyone making commits on octoprint uh, including and most importantly me <laughs> to not forget to compile style files anymore and um, yeah that also was something that that, that I had on my to-do list for well over a year now. I actually found a, a small wrapper script prototype the other day on my hard disk, which dated back to 2022. So um, it was time. Um, and uh, yeah, this this little wrapper that I wrote for pre-commit use that can also be used by other uh, repositories. So if you have pre-commit running with your plugin, for example, you can just add that to the pre-commit definitions and uh, make sure you get the same advantage of having that checked on every single commit that you do of less files. Um, yeah. And then, of course, I also took care of the one or other bug fix and merged PR 
Um, so what are the next steps? Um, apart from having to apparently still fix some bugs on the upload manager that uh, I just ran into right during the demonstration. Yay. Um, uh, I also wanted to look into bundling another one of uh, Salandor's unmaintained plugins, which is the custom control editor. Uh, that's also been on a to-do list now for, well, I think two years or something. Um, that will definitely require some refactoring and UX changes. And if I remember correctly, there's also some quite nasty bug in there that people have run into uh, where they, uh, where, yeah, where, where the uh, custom control config gets wiped sometimes, um, probably some kind of race condition caching issue, something like this. So that will have to get hunted down. Um, but then that will also become part of core Octoprint because, I mean, the whole custom control concept has been a part of core Octoprint since pretty much its first version. Um, and I guess it's time to also add a UI for, for, for managing it, or rather to add that to core now that it's uh, pretty much abandoned um, in, in third-party plugin shape. Yeah, and then you all hopefully also saw in this little demo of the health check dialog, the little uh, link to the FAQ on how to, to migrate to a newer Python version. Um, yeah, this FAQ needs to be written, and that is something that I really need to do. Um, and I also hope that I'll be able to add some kind of script like we had with the Python 2, to Python 3 migration uh, to help people, especially on Octopi, um, to migrate. Um, so that is something that will require some thinking through and working on. Um, the goal really here is to not just tell people, hey, your old system is kind of broken, but also re tell them, and this is how you fix it right away. And um, that, of course, requires testing that uh, extensively and um, also making sure these steps are pretty fail-proof um, and foolproof. And... Um, yeah, I mean, in theory, getting rid of Python 3.7 would be easy by just telling people to 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 please reflash their Octopi 018 images uh, or, or cards with with Octopi 1.0 or maybe a, a current Raspberry Pi version, um, and just throwing Octoprint on there and uh, restoring from a backup. I mean, let's face it, it's often a good idea to reflash a new card and migrate to that from time to time in any case, because SD cards do and will break a lot um, in the field uh, and, and corrupt your data and such. So before that happens, it's better to replace them. But yeah, still, I would prefer to also be able to offer some less destructive process for this whole migration thing, especially since we might have to do that more often. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit... It's a bit tricky, given that I really do not want to be pushed into the position where I have to, where, where Octoprint tries to upgrade the, the the runtime environment it's running in. This is just a recipe for uh, tears and uh, broken installs. So this is really not something that I want to do. Uh, this is something where I really want to have the user do that, but then I have to help them do that. So yeah. Um, and what I'm also speaking about deteriorating SD cards, uh, what I'm also looking into is right now if there is anything that I can do in shape of a health check that will actually detect if a file system starts to fail. Um, the problem is, contrary to SSDs, for example, with SD cards on the Raspberry Pi, I don't have any, mm, let's say, non-destructive tooling to figure out if the card is still good. So I could just write over it and if that fails, then it is broken, but then the data is gone either way. So that doesn't really help. Um, and uh, something like smart smart uh, control or something like that, which exists for SSDs, is simply not available for SDs because apparently there is not even an, an, an API in the SD card specification for uh, health checks, which is a bit sad, but yeah. Um, so I'm thinking maybe uh, try to figure out if there are maybe some log 
lock in and uh, uh, lock lines that I can parse out of syslog or something to detect that. That would of course be something that goes into the Pi support plugin. So limited to Raspberry Pi is limited to Linux. So not that much of platform uh, cross cross platform compatibility needed. But yeah, so that's the idea at least. And yeah, so that is pretty much the goal for the next weeks. Um, once all of that is done, I can also look into pushing out the first release candidate for 1.11. But for now, that's not yet uh, something that I can do because yeah, there's still too much stuff that I want to push in there. Um, and that is pretty much all that I planned on telling you today. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, I hope it was interesting and that uh, con the, the idea of having a bundled upload manager uh, excites you as much as it did me, because, yeah, I really should have done this ages ago. Uh, and it also solves so many UX problems that existed with the existing files list, because that was just simply kept too minimal because of its location in the sidebar uh, to, to allow for good man uh, management. I might even throw the copy, uh, the the yeah, the the copy and 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 cut and delete icons out of there, frankly, because that should that is stuff that probably should rather be done through the manager in the future. Um, and yeah, so uh, I'm excited to see that getting used by the community and uh, um, hopefully helping with the. Uh, uh yeah with cleaning up the mess that is is at least the mess that is my uploads folder i don't know about yours maybe you are very very organized there i'm not <laughs> and uh so this will help a ton there um yeah and with that being said uh thanks for being here hope it was interesting uh next one of these will be in yeah roughly a month time as always uh and yeah Stay healthy and happy printing. Bye.